real world, these are the steps you should practice. There's only a few techniques you need to learn. So your five years of training is to rehearse these. Feel free to take pictures of these slides, because then I, I, you know, I want you to write them out because that is an extra repetition that you'll get so you can memorize this better. Uh, I want you, so I'm gonna show you all of them now so you can begin slowly adding these to the arsenal and just know that not many residents know these. So I think it's just really useful for you to have all this stuff straight away. So imagine you're an anesthetics registrar, you're training hospital, you're about to anesthetize a 50 year old male for lap collie, no allergies, past history, meds or anything. And your consultant is impressed with your ability and wants you to do your case on your own. But just imagine you give the induction after all the positioning and preparing of theater. I've just noted that it's a non-reversible uh, relaxant anyway, just to keep it simple or rather not simple, uh, difficult for you. Uh, and you attempt to bag mask, but are un un unable to move air. Think about all the steps you do. You attempt intubation, but cannot get a view. What do you do then? And then you attempt LMA ventilation, but are unable to ventilate. What do you do? So in the next few pages and slides, what, what I'll do is I'll just go through exhaustively what you would do. Um, so you need to know this back to front. There's no room for error. Each optimization step should be drilled into your memory and part of your medical reflexes. So let's go through this and see if you got all the steps. Um, you want to be aware of these techniques, as I mentioned, know how it fits into the difficult airway algorithm, and then to be able to drill and repeat these techniques from the start. So this is the DAS guidelines, which pretty much says laryngoscopy, optimize that, LMA, optimize that, and revert to face mask oxygen, oxygenation, op optimize that, and then an LMA. And if all of those fail, then you're looking at a surgical airway. Let's get to it practically. We'll do a step-by-step -step method, practice these techniques electively for every theater session when you're training, do these as drills. So you've got the insight to, you know, do them when it really matters. For endotracheal intubation, I always think of APB, call for assistance earlier because you're junior. And most of you, when you start out, won't be doing this alone. Have a good position of the patient and ensure paralysis. So APB. Finally, I do burp, bougie and blade. I rehearse this time and time again. I make sure my nurses know this as well. I say burp first because backwards, upwards, right burp pressure only requires your hands. So you don't have to get any extra equipment and it's just so effective. Bougie is in the theater, but needs to be taken, you know, opened out of the packet. So that's the second thing I would request. And then failing that, or at the same time, I would ask a theater tech or another nurse to get me the video lingoscope or, or a different blade if that was available. Those are the things I drill every single time. And I want you to know that that's an exhaustive list of all the techniques you need to know. Finally, for the advanced techniques later on in your training, intubation, intubating LMAs, fiber optics, and some other advanced techniques, which I won't go through. So that's everything you need to drill for endotracheal intubation, bar none, okay? Bag mask drills, again, do this time and time again. The advanced steps are literally just these few things, jaw thrust, inserting a Goodell using two hands and getting your assistant to ventilate. That's about as much as any consultant and this knows how to do. And the only difference between me and you will be the fact that I've done it a thousand times and you will eventually get there as well. You might as well drill that from the start to know how to use each of these steps. After your first couple of weeks, ask to do these extra steps. LMA drills, these are a bit more brief, but essentially jaw thrust, rotation of the LMA, use a smaller LMA, a larger LMA or a different LMA and just carefully use more force to proceed down. If the LMA isn't ventiling, you can do micro adjustments of it, give more propofol or give more muscle relaxant. So a quick summary, you've now got the advanced drills to practice in your rotation for all three techniques. And you know how to, if you predict difficulty, you'll be far more likely to use those extra techniques and optimize the patient like we mentioned before. These will and must become your innate airway management reflexes. And now like here are some of the things that you know, practically speaking, you can actually drill. So why not use the advanced bag mask technique every time for a week? So Goodell, two hands, jaw thrust, assistant ventilating. Every single time for a week, you use that technique. Um, maybe hold a mask as the airway for a few short cases. So all you're doing is just holding the mask. Um, and that's great because then your consultant can do the um, the notes and the EMR if that's, if that's relevant. Um, but what you do then is you really get this, you know, the muscle memory in your hands. Um, you find, you learn all about micro adjustments of the, of the bag mask technique, um, as well as just getting that, um, you know, fatigue resistance in your hands as well. It's painful, but it's really good for you. Uh, maybe use a bougie electively. If you never use one, just ask to use one and use that every single time for a week. 
or maybe you, you got really good at using a bougie. Why not use a bougie with an artificial grade three airway? What I mean by that is you get your best view. Let's say it's a grade one with the laryngoscope. Then I drop the view and make it worse for me intentionally. And then I now can only see the epiglottis. And then I put a bougie under. If you do that a hundred times, when you actually have a proper grade three view, it will be second nature that you know that you've got this. So practice what's hard while it's still easy electively. This is something I do with a lot of things, by the way. Um, so again, use a video laryngoscope, use it with a D blade, with a stilet or bougie, um, maybe try an inhalational induction, use an eye LMA or intubating LMA. Um, and you know, this other technique is use, use a 14 gauge cannula uh, you know, for IV access electively. Do what's hard while it's easy, because when the time comes and you actually need to do a 14 gauge uh, for a massive transfusion, you will already have done it electively a few times. Obviously use your judgment, to, you know, talk to your consultant, depending on your level of expertise and how comfortable you are with the basics, that's how I'd approach this. Get the basics right first and then quickly advance. Don't get bogged down with just perfecting the basics if you're already pretty good at them.